Drive up your engine! Now, people are always asking me, Scotty, what do you think of the Dodge Charger? Well, here's a 2012 Dodge Charger that was made in Canada. Now, this is the one with the Hemi engine, the big V8. Let's see how many miles it's got on it. 148,618 miles. And you can't feel it, but the engine's shaking, it's misfiring, and the check engine light's on. Well, we're still going to deal with that, it, but it's got the touch screen. The AC still blows freezing cold. It's got the black and chrome interior, so, you know, it's a classic muscle car type thing. This isn't the loaded one, but it's all black and dark. It's got the Charger Mystique going to it, but it's got a cracked window. I mean, you don't see the side windows cracked as much, but this is cracked. Now, the front one, yeah, it's really cracked up. You see that all the time. Not the greatest glass in the world. No, it is a four-door muscle car. There's plenty of room in the back, and yes, it's got AC ducts in the back too, so it's not economy. You get cool in the back too, which of course you're going to need with a black interior. And we go to the back, open the trunk, and they also have the battery in the back. You got to make real sure that these are clean and tight, because these have a tendency of getting loose and having problems. And it does have the horrible fake spare, but they make everything cheap these days. So they got the original giant wheels, they're in decent shape, and we'll check under the hood. This is the one everybody wants with the big Hemi V8. This baby's got 370 horsepower, about 380 pound-feet of torque. It's a powerful 5.7 liter V8. And yes, it's a tremendous gas hog, any way you look at it. In town, it's rated at 16. Last time I drove one of these, I got about 10, because I drove it hard. Now, this particular one, it's not the all-wheel drive version. It's rear-wheel drive. Big engine in the front, transmission in the middle, and rear-wheel drive. Now, this baby's got a five-speed Chrysler-made automatic transmission, which has many problems as they age. Unfortunately, this is the cheaper version, because back in 2012, the fancy chargers had the ZF Austrian 8 HP, 8 high-performance, 8-speed transmission, the same design that's in the new Toyota Supra. Completely different transmission there. Many of the modern chargers, 2020, up they have the zf eight speed transmission which is a super expensive transmission to fix when it breaks but they're not known for breakage they can take a tremendous amount of horsepower for example in the year 2017 zf sold 3.1 million zf 8 hp automatic transmissions but this thing's got the chrysler five speed which isn't the greatest if you're going to buy a car like this you need to do a bunch of research find out what engine it has Find out what transmission it has. If this say would have had the ZF8 speed, this thing would be worth a lot more money than it is today. Sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference when you're buying a car. Say you like the looks of a charger, but you're not an absolute maniac, you'd forget this whole system. And you buy one that has a V6 engine in it because they don't put out as much horsepower, but there's less strain on the transmissions. And from my experience, they last a lot longer. They get a little bit better gas mileage because they're a V6, but mainly they're generally going to outlast these Hemi ones, especially with the five-speed Chrysler made transmissions. And they do so for two main reasons. There's less power, less strain, things last longer, and the guys that drive these like maniacs all want the big Hemi V8, and they drive the heck out of them. You buy a used one, you often end up buying a used, worn out car then. But with the V6s, not the power, not the popularity either, but you can get them a lot cheaper. Now let's take a listen to the motor. Now they make a lot of noise, but you can hear that clacking. That's not normal. It sounds good at the back, but not the front. Now at a minimum, this thing has hydraulic lifter problems. Hopefully that's the only problem with this thing. So we're gonna check it out with my scan tool. So let's hook up the old scan tool and check her out. Away we go with my new scan tool. People often ask me if they want a good scan tool. They find out that the $100 ones aren't good enough and they don't want to buy a $4,000 one. This particular one is about a $500 scan tool. It's a Maxicom MK808. So far, hey, works pretty good. Does a lot of stuff, but it isn't $3,500. It's $500. So far it works good. It auto read the VIN. I didn't have to type it in. Let's see if it picks the car out right. It's decoding the VIN. 2012 Dodge Charger, yep, that's right. So now we're gonna analyze it. Here we go, it's scanning it. Found five faults in a powertrain. Scanning it pretty fast. Typical Dodge, it's eight years old. It's got five, six, seven, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23 fault codes. But what we care about the most is the powertrain. It's got a bunch of codes for cylinder two misfire, airflow, ignition coil insufficient ionization, ignition coil three secondary circuit, insufficient ionization. Looking at all this data and talking to the customer, they have never changed the number two ignition coil. So we're gonna change the number two ignition coil and hope it helps. Now realize, that won't get rid of the ticking. I can tell by the noise, the lifters are making noise, but on this engine, change the lifters is 7.2 hours of labor. You're gonna spend about a thousand smackers doing that, plus the parts, more money than a car's worth. So we're gonna try the coil. You know, take the stupid cover off. We're gonna change the number two. Well, this is two, four, six, eight, so we'll change this one here. So we squeeze the connector. They're on tight. Sometimes you really gotta squeeze them. There. And we'll unbolt it, 10 millimeter. And if you can't see it, there's another one hiding here. Of course, it's in the way of everything. There we go. Now we'll get the socket and spin it by hand and pull it out. Get that out of the way again. Out it comes. Then we'll check it, make sure. Got the same connectors and everything. That looks the same. So we'll pop it back in the hole so it fits on the spark plugs. Customer already changed the spark plugs. They tried that themselves and that didn't fix it. And we'll bolt these back on. Start them first. Then once you start them, you can tighten them up. Sure made long threads on this baby. Now we can finish the job here and the other side. And of course, don't forget to plug the coil in or it won't fire at all. There, that's locked on. Then I'll put the stupid beauty cover on. It doesn't really do anything, but what the heck it came with it. Close the hood. Before we take it for a ride, we're gonna erase the coat, so. So we just turn on the idiot lights, not running, and click erase codes. Ignition on and engine off, yes. And now it's gonna reset stuff. And it even checks it to make sure that it did. We'll read it and see. Now there's no fault codes. So that will start her up. You can see the check engine lights off. The air pressure tire monitor and warning system's on, but what the heck, everything breaks on these old things. Now we'll take it for a good long ride. It's still got some guts left to it. Not what it started with. Because as I said, the lifters are still worn, odds are the cams are still, it's never gonna perform perfectly, but we're gonna see if we got rid of that number two cylinder misfire by taking it on the highway. It does still make a nice growl. And truthfully, it does ride like an old muscle car. You feel every bump on the road. This thing's still got old shocks and struts on it. We wanna see if we can get rid of the misfire. Now we take it for a spin, let's check the data out. It's checking it out. Now it's got one fault. We'll see what the fault that came back is. As you can see, even during that drive, we still got a whole bunch of faults that have come back already. Yeah, the car is electronically a junker. But we're gonna see what's happening with the powertrain control module. We'll read the codes. And we still have a cylinder number two misfire. And what does that prove? That proves that my initial diagnosis by ear was correct. It's still misfiring, even though it has codes for the coil. That's a bunch of BS. The engine's physically worn out. The lifters are worn and the cams are worn. It's just not worth fixing. You can see with this data, which is the injector pulse widths of the cylinders. They're all over the place because the computer is trying to compensate for a worn engine. Sometimes this thing is 2,500. Sometimes it goes down. There we go, 25, 24. And then some of them down here, I mean, they're even lower, 21. They're moving all over the place because it's trying to compensate for the wear in the engine. Now that one went down to 1500. Now it's going back up to 21, 22. And this is all idling with my foot not on the gas. The computer is doing it itself to try to compensate for wear. You see now just idling here, it went from a pending misfire code to an active misfire code. So basically, as you can see, this charger basically has a worn out engine. Now, the customer bought it a year ago. It wasn't a customer of mine then. If he would have brought it to me, I would have told them, don't ever pay $7,000 for that car. It's not worth hardly anything because it's pretty well worn out. This is a reason I tell people not to buy Chrysler products. 
They are not well made. They do not hold up over time. It's not like this is a dinosaur. It's eight years old. And what I showed you was a running problem that makes it misfire on cylinder number two. There's a ton more electronic problems that I haven't even analyzed yet and I'm not going to bother because it's not worth it. This vehicle as it stands would probably need a fully remanufactured engine. More money than the car's worth. But at least now you know the truth about Dodge Chargers. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.